Recently, we're seeing a huge trend in people moving to Edmonton from Ontario. One of the main reasons for this is affordability. Affordability plays a key role in your lifestyle. Living in a more affordable city allows you to put your money towards other things other than only housing, or it even lets you have the chance at owning your own house. Hey everyone, I'm Janine, a realtor here in Edmonton, Alberta. Today I want to go over things you should know if you're moving from Ontario to Ontario to Edmonton. Before we get started though, I'd love it if you could help me out by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. It helps me out with this channel. Okay, let's get into it. Having lived in a few different cities myself, such as Victoria and Calgary, I know it's not easy to make the move. There are a lot of unknowns and what ifs and all these thoughts going through your head. So if you're thinking about moving from Ontario to Edmonton, I've put together this guide and I hope it helps. I reference a lot of different content, content and links, and this will all be in my blog through the description below. Or you could comment below for what you're looking for and I'll post the link. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm always happy to help. Okay, let's start with housing in Edmonton. The price of real estate is significantly lower in Edmonton compared to Ontario, especially the GTA. So if you're looking at a standard family home in Edmonton, based on the data from the Canadian Real Estate Association, the average price is around three fifty dollars to 400000 That same home in the Greater Toronto area would be worth $1.3 million. The market in Edmonton actually gives people a chance to enter the market, especially growing families. And also, this style of home is close to amenities within the city. You aren't being pushed out of the city just to be able to afford a home. If you'd rather be outside of the city, there are a number of suburbs around the area that are all relatively close in price too. For example, St. Albert is a very popular choice as well as Sherwood Park. That's where I live. Don't forget to factor in your property tax. For the average home around $400,000, you can expect to pay around $3,800 a year in property tax. You could pay this annually or you could factor it into your mortgage or pay monthly through the city. To get an idea of what you'll be paying, you can use the city tool, the property tax estimator. Find this in the link in my blog in the description below. Let's talk about utilities. You can expect to pay between $200 to $400 a month in utilities, but these utilities will vary from house to house because of size, use, season, and also because there are different service providers to choose from. Within the Edmonton city limits, Epcor is the only company that manages water, but you'll have the choice for power and gas. So I highly recommend that you shop around for the best rates because these can vary. Keep in mind that your utilities will go up in the winter because of the cold. Don't forget to notify your current utility providers if you're moving out. As soon as you know you, your move-in date in Edmonton, schedule your utilities. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay, so the sooner the better. While you're doing this, it's a good idea to include the change of address for Canada Post as well so they can set up mail forwarding. So let's talk about jobs. In general, you can expect a higher income in Edmonton than in Ontario. Edmonton has a big industrial job market and is growing in others. You can find tons of jobs and you can find tons of available jobs on Indeed. This is our most popular site for open positions in Edmonton. To get a better idea of what's in demand in the labor market, you can also take a look at the government's job market forecast. I have the link to this in my blog post in the description below. And everyone's favorite, taxes. Taxes in Edmonton. One huge advantage actually we have in Alberta compared to Ontario is that we don't have a uh, property land transfer tax, which can save you thousands of dollars when purchasing a home. In Alberta, we're also very lucky to have only GST and no PST. So you can expect to only pay 5% in taxes instead of the 13 you are paying in Ontario. We do have a, some extra taxes on things like tobacco, fuel, and tourism. So to get a complete breakdown of all things taxes, the government of Alberta has put together a guide for you. You can find the link in my blog post below. The weather. The weather in Edmonton is a little different than let's say Toronto. Summers are hot and dry, winters are cold and snowy. You'll probably find it colder here in Edmonton, but you know, throw on some layers and head out into the cold and you'll be totally fine. Even on cold days, we get sunshine. So this all comes down to preference really. 
but don't worry though it's not like we live in igloos it's actually very hot in the summer and fall is beautiful out here you'll enjoy the long bright sunny days and the open skies daycares in edmonton so if you have young kids you'll most likely be curious about daycares Typically, the cost per month will range from $800 to $1,200, depending on the facility and whether it's a daycare or a day home. Alberta just recently created a deal with the federal government. They agreed to reduce those childcare fees by an average of 50% that has started in early 2022 and to provide $10 a day on average by 2026. So once you start your search for a daycare or a day home, I suggest you use a tool provided by the government. You'll be able to look up the facility and see the records and inspection results as well ensure that it's accredited. So you could find this in the link in my blog post below. Transit and transportation in Edmonton. So transit in Edmonton isn't as developed as Toronto, but we're not as big. A monthly transit transit pass will be about $100 and that covers our buses and our LRT. There's a lot of work going into Edmonton Transit at the moment with the development of a new LRT line. If you do rely on transit, I would suggest taking a look at the map and figuring out your route and if that works for you before purchasing a home. And you can find that map in my blog post or leave me a comment below and I'll link it to you. If you have a car, expect to spend less time in traffic here than in Toronto. We are a smaller city with less people. So we also have the ring road, the Anthony Hyundai, it goes around the whole city. So you can generally get from one end to the city to the other in about 30 minutes. It will also cost you slightly less to fuel up your vehicle. If you're bringing your vehicle from Ontario to Edmonton, be prepared to get your Alberta driver's license, registration and insurance within 90 days of moving here. Let's talk about schools. So if you're moving to Edmonton with kids, you'll need to find them a school, but where to start? So in Edmonton, you are assigned a designated school based on the neighborhood you live in. However, you do have a choice if you'd like to change it. If you'd like to learn more about the school system and that Edmonton Public Schools has created a resource page so if you're new to the city. So you can find that in my blog post or post a comment and I'll link it to you. If you have teenagers looking to continue to post-secondary soon, Edmonton has great options with schools like the University of Alberta, Grant McEwen University, and Nate. Okay, something super important, healthcare and doctors in Edmonton. Once you move, you'll need to apply for your Alberta healthcare card within three months. You'll then want to find a family doctor. This sometimes can be a little challenging, so you can use the Find a Family Doctor tool. This will give you a list of doctors accepting new patients. If you want the link, post a comment or you can find it in my blog post below. For specialized doctors like pediatrician, for example, you'll most likely need a referral from your family doctor. You can also call 811, this is our health link number. They can help you find a doctor as well as answer basic medical questions and provide you with appropriate ab advice. Recreation and outdoor living. So Edmonton is home to the largest urban park in Canada, the River Valley. There are so many places to explore along the River Valley. You can also go boating, canoeing, and paddle boarding. If you do want to escape the city though, we have a number of lakes nearby like Lake or like Wabaman Lake or provincial parks like Elk Island, or you know what, make it a weekend trip and head out to the mountains, Banff or Jasper, both of which are four hours away from Edmonton. Things to do in Edmonton. Edmonton has a variety of activities for everyone. Take part in the art and culture here and go explore the Art Gallery of Alberta. Or if you're big into shopping, we have North America's largest shopping mall, West Edmonton Mall. Not only does the mall have tons of shopping, but there's amusement parks, water parks, bowling, theater, and so much more. We also have uh, Rogers Place, so that's home to the Edmonton Oilers, as well as our main concert hub. Edmonton is also known as Festival City with over 50 festivals throughout the year, like the popular Fringe Festival, for example. Safety in Edmonton. Just like any city, there will be problems, but overall, Edmonton is a safe place to live. Many people will have different opinions about which neighborhood is the safest based on their own experiences, but my suggestion would be to look at the crime map by the Edmonton Police. From there, you can decide what feels best for you. If you'd like to see the map, post a comment below or find the link in my blog. 
Since this map is created by the Edmonton Police, the surrounding communities like St. Albert or Sherwood Park, they aren't included. Moving can be stressful and moving from a different province can be even more stressful. I want to help ease the stress by helping you navigate your move. Before you even get to Edmonton, we can set up consultation, video tours, discuss current market, whatever helps make the process easier. I'll learn what's most important to you and how you picture your home and your lifestyle and we can begin your home search. Even if you're not sure about moving to Edmonton from Ontario or you know you just have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. So until next time, see ya!